The more you're in your body, the more attractive you are. Most of us that have been through a spiritual awakening have been through trauma and we've left the confinements of our bottom three chakras and now exist in our top three chakras. Very intuitive, very empathic, but we've lost the connection to ourself. That I was emotionally abandoning myself for other. I was emotionally abandoning myself to make other people happy or to get my needs met. And that's when I, I had to have compassion towards myself because I became very judgmental. I be, at first, I became angry. I became angry at everybody that I felt took advantage of me because I allowed them to. And then I became a, uh, mad at my old self for allowing certain people in my life to take advantage of me or for me to stay in things longer than I should. And I had to learn to have compassion. But a big part of this is the story and like me not being in our in my own body. That's a huge thing for attraction. There's a more magnetic quality the more you're in your body. And it sounds counterintuitive because if you just if you just be in your top three chakras and and like tune to everybody, then that'd be attractive. No, you get the more you're in your body, the more attractive you are. Most of us that have been through a spiritual awakening have been through trauma and we've left the confinements of our bottom three chakras and now exist in our top three chakras. Very intuitive, very empathic, but we've lost the connection to ourself, to our own body. And that's where then we realize that our beliefs, our stories about love, our stories about women, our stories about men, our stories about what it's like. What I had to become aware of my stories about like love and divorce because my I've seen my dad be divorced twice. So I'm like, huh, do I ever want to get married? I've had to look at that and be like, okay, can I shed that belief and realize that that's a meaning my dad gave it. That's how he did. And that, you know, and I see my dad now he's, he's, I think he's going to open up to dating soon. He's always rationalized things because he's like raising my, my youngest sister. She's now 18. He like has no excuse now, you know, he's like, Oh, I, she takes up a lot of my time, <laughs> but it's like, basically I give up myself for other. This is my familiar pattern. Just like I did in the marriage with somebody that was emotionally abusive. So it's like, I can see how these patterns, you can also look at the, your parents and see the stories your parents have. We take on much of the stories of our parents, the patterns of our parents, whether we admit it or not. And we t tend to attract people into our life that are an interesting balance of the parental dynamics. So it's called the Imago is the name of this image that we have that are the best or are the the most impactful qualities of our mom and our dad are within our partners that we attract and both the things we liked and that triggered us because they feel familiar. And basically what we're doing is we're attracting partners to ourselves that can help us heal our childhood wounds. This is normally what happens. And there's aspects that we'll bring out of them in a relationship as well that help us heal our childhood wounds in relationship. You know, what's interesting is I noticed that my dad attracted my ex-stepmom, who's a very angry person, and my uncle, who passed away, my cousin's mom and dad. So my uncle is my dad's brother, also really nice guy. My dad, nice guy. They have some type of trauma around anger because both of their, both of their wives, or not just wives, but yeah, like they've attracted people into their lives that had very strong anger quality. My... Uh, uncle's ex-wife, who's my cousin's mom, she she used to be my aunt, I guess. She passed away recently too, but she had a very kind of like um, triggering, angry quality where she would blow up on people. And I'm like, huh, why is my, why is my dad's side of the family attracting women that have this very anger quality? Well, the, I think that the anger has been suppressed in the family lineage. And what happened is they attract, sometimes we attract people normally that have the under, that have the qualities that we've either repressed or suppressed so that we can learn about that. So for example, my dad being in his own frame and like suppressing anger by being a nice guy attracted my ex-stepmom who was crazy narcissistic, very strong in her frame, very demanding and very angry because that's like almost like what he needed to learn in a really weird way. So these are, kind. it's kind of a, it's called the Imago. Um, this is something, by the way, right now is the uh, like last chance to join the 21 Day Magnetic Love Challenge, which is where we're going into this SHIFT process. You're going to learn how to shift your beliefs, your stories about love, about even 
you know, your own sense of worthiness. It's healing from childhood pain. It's healing your attachment style, whether you're anxious or avoiding attachment. It's um, healing codependent patterns. It's feeling worthy, whole, and complete in relationship. Feeling whole, worthy, whole, and complete in your own body. I show you the frame technique, how to get inside of your body to feel more embodied in your masculine or feminine energy. I'm bringing on experts to help with this. My shadow work integration coach, his name is Doug. He's going to be doing a workshop on masculine and feminine energy and how to heal masculine and feminine wounds so that if you're a woman, you want to become more feminine. He shows you how to do that. If you're a man, you want to be more masculine, he shows you how to do that or vice versa, whatever sexual orientation you have. But the idea is to tap more into these different sides to understand polarity and healing attachment styles, basically everything that I've used to attract love and also to tap more into a sense of worthiness. Many of you have noticed that my energy has completely changed since like a year ago. It's because of the work I've been doing this last year. So in a 21-day challenge, I'm going to be going live 21 days in a row, and I'm going to be bringing on guests that will be live as well some of the days. And we're going to be going through and healing sexuality, healing shame, healing these emotions to feel 100% worthy, whole, and complete. And the idea is by the end of it, we're going to be a, a completely new, higher vibrational magnetic version of us. So if you want to wire in a higher vibrational magnetic version of you, go right now to AaronDowdy.com slash love, L-O-V-E. That's AaronDowdy.com slash love, L-O-V-E, A-A-R-O-N-D-O-U-G-H-T-Y.com slash love. Join because there's uh, three bonuses you get, plus there is also... Um, yeah, it's what makes it different than YouTube is that it's not just videos. It's like videos with homework that then you do and you get into the High Vibe Tribe, which is a separate app and it's a group in there. You'll meet people all over the world doing the same thing and it's a safe, vulnerable container for you to share these things for you to heal. So this is uh, the last chance to join. I'm going to have this video go up when it's the last chance to join before we start and uh, July 1st to July 21st. And uh, you can go right now to AaronDowdy.com slash love to join. And that's kind of where we're going to be going through this process. And that brings me to the next one, by the way, which is H. H is heal. Heal. Now, story. Become aware of your story. Become aware of your beliefs. Awareness is most of the process. And then heal. Heal is where you learn how to feel the emotions that came up to release them from your body. This is also where you go into the shadow work and you go into your own body to become more embodied. So I show you the frame technique here. And this changes everything, by the way. I did a, a breath work. Here's another cool thing about, by the way, the 21-day challenge. Let me tell you something that happened yesterday. My, my buddy Victor went to the somatic breath training that he went for like four days last week. And he learned this somatic breathing technique. And he asked me if I wanted to have a breath work thing with another friend of mine. And I went to his house two days ago. And you probably hear it in my voice. That's why I'm kind of coughing. But basically, I had a huge release two days ago. What happened is I go over to Victor. He he had this, by the way, Victor had this crazy childhood trauma. He A firework blew up on him when he was a young kid. And there was so much guilt that he had to shed. There's so much trauma that came from that. It led to him becoming a heroin addict for years. And, you know, it, it, he had to wear like this bodysuit going to school. It got made fun of. And he just went through a lot of shame, a lot of guilt, a lot of like emotions from having a firework that exploded on him when at 4th of July when he was a kid in a neighborhood firework party. And he's got scars on his body from it. You know, it's like, it's it's been, it's like his child, mine is like the ex-stepmom thing, his is the firework. And finally, after years and years and years of a whole bunch of crazy stuff since, um, like, opened up Pandora's box, box with plant medicine because he, he re, like, this stuff started to come up for him. He finally has moved through it in a very beautiful way and it came through different breath work this breathwork modality that he learned. In this breathwork modality, you breathe in a certain pattern, you do some breath holds, breath retention, but it is so powerful. So I'm doing it. I go into, we're in his garage. Um, he's got three kids. So the kids were in the house. Him and his wife, Patty, were leading the sing with me and my friend Cece. And it was like, it brought up, you know, there's different songs that come in. And um, it's about an hour long of breathing and there's different times you hold breath. And when you hold these, this breath and you ask questions to your intuition, it's like these answers just come. So I'm doing it and I want to like, I want to feel more, my intention is to tap more into love and to release stored suppressed emotion. And in it, it, it kind of takes on a life of its own. So I'm doing this breathwork modality and what comes up for me is the block that I have to love is suppressed anger. Anger towards my, uh, my ex-stepmom. Anger towards my dad for allowing a lot of that shit to happen. 
anger towards exes, anger towards like a lot of times I was nice for validation, but it wasn't authentic and great my old self. And I, you know, in this, you, you, you cry, you let go of emotion, you scream. I screamed like I've never screamed before. I was yelling, releasing stored anger. And it was very interesting because it was like 20 minutes of screaming and my, my, my voice was really kind of blown out afterwards, obviously, but I felt such, there was a moment when Patty was singing this song, Victor's wife, and it was this angry song where she was banging on the drum and she was like really loud. And I was literally dialoguing and like talking to my ex stepmom. And I was screaming. I kind of, I wanted to beat the shit out of her. <laughs> you know, when I was a kid, you know, getting the shit beat out of me, there were times I wanted to fight back, but I'd get in more trouble if I did fight back, you know, like to protect myself, which is a natural. So I, I had to hold it in. I had to hold the anger in, you know, and I was finally expressing that in this like breath work. And it was so powerful for me to release. And um, I felt it release out of my body. And I, I became aware of how many times in my life I had like, like not been authentic at the expense of wanting validation. And it was like a huge release of energy and my whole throat closed up. Like it was a, it was, I realized that this was related to my throat chakra. So it was a big healing that was taking place. And, um, it was profound afterwards. I felt so light, light and loose and the way this works somatic, by the way, you know, I've shadow, I've dug, that's going to be doing that call in the, um, the the love challenge but he talks all the time about somatic releases which is basically the way we work is very similar to like animals where we feel trauma in our past animals release that trauma if a gazelle is chased by a cheetah before it goes back into the tribe if it escapes it will shake the shit out of like all the energy and all the tension so that it doesn't bring that trauma back into the tribe consciousness and the hive consciousness of like that animal so that's a natural thing that animals do humans we suppress that shit we hold it in and and we we rationalize it with logic. And what happened is when you're when you do this breath work, you're shaking out the trauma, you're shaking out the energy. And funny enough, I'm releasing this anger during this eclipse right now. There's like this lunar eclipse or solar eclipse or whatever. And um I didn't I woke up at 3:30 randomly. Um like 2 days ago and I'm like, "Why?" It was after that breath work and I it literally it left my body and went to my field and it took me like a day or two to really release it from my field, but it was so profound because I I feel more authentic now. Once you experience and you feel the emotions that you didn't feel from before, it then releases out of your body. It's that simple. I hope you guys enjoyed that little segment from my podcast called the Aaron Dowdy Podcast. If you want to listen to the rest of that episode, click the link below. You'll see it on iTunes and Spotify. You can download episodes. It's so easy to listen to. You can do it while you're working out, while you're driving. It's so convenient. And that's where new episodes go live every Tuesday and Thursday. Every single week, I have guests coming on the podcast. I have solo episodes and we go really deep. This is really a place where I get very personable and I share more about things I'm thinking of. I share my top book insights and you can check it out and subscribe below and you will see it there. So iTunes, Spotify, listen to the rest of the episode below as well. And I hope you guys enjoyed. And as always, I'll see you guys on the next episode. Peace, much love and namaste.